I said, is it true? This is the curiosity. Lucky enough, at that time, this one, this one happened. There's one of them who was raped by Androbag at the age of 13, 14. And I was in university. So the mother, everybody was objecting for abortion or something like that. I took her and brought her to school with some people who are living with me. Then she, later I sent her to my sister who is living in Adazia. Then she later delivered the child. A very beautiful boy, a handsome boy like that, and brought her back. Then I now asked her, as that's what, that's more girl that you know she was a virgin and now being raped and she gave birth at the age of 18 years why how possible is it if she has if if that thing you said is true will she be able to give birth so that is true in that one i cancel that that question you know some people are having this question but they are afraid of asking this type of question Praise the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, some people will come up with other ideas and said, this is false prophets. Because everything in their eyes is corrupt and evil. That everybody is doing it. Therefore, we are not what? Exceptional. What type of fallacy is that? That there is even in the church abuse and evil does not mean that everybody is a sinner. Otherwise, God will destroy the world in a second. There is still people who are working hard. There are people who are actually faithful. There are people who are really working and struggling to be good. So you cannot use yourself as who cannot control himself or herself and now condemn everybody in the world that they are evil. It, it cannot use that and make a general categorical statement. This is the idea of false prophets. Especially on the modern world. And I believe what the evil one is trying to do with all these accusations, because let me also say something. There are many people that they are being accused, that are accused falsely. There are many people priests or even cardinals they are accusing that are false accusation. Do you know that? I have a friend who is working this one even even one of our lecturers even narrated this particular one I want to mention now. A young lady came who was seeking for help. This priest was be helping. Another time he came the priest said I don't have anything. He later said yeah, the young lady, that very day it was, this happened in America, it was snowing. He now, okay, can I sleep in the, in the parish house? And by implication, you don't sleep, a woman doesn't sleep. So, in all, in somebody of the whole story, the woman later giving a quarter in the parish to sleep up because of the snow, the ghost. Then he went after and wrote to the bishop that he was abused. Now, the priest, you know, in this thing, as far well as the accusation has been laid on you, the church doesn't ask any investigation. They ask you to leave the diocese. The priest now left the diocese. He become, he started, she started getting comments of the lies he said. He went back to the bishop and said, I tell the lies because I'm looking for money. They, because he came to look for the priest, another place. Where is this? They said they have, uh, because they wanted to ask to pay for lamps or something like that. They now send the priest back to, is a Nigerian priest, send it back to Nigeria. And then she came back and went to the bishop and said, I just tell lies. I just only looking for money to take care of my children. But it has been, you have already killed the names in that way. The truth means that there are many who have been falsely accused. But what is the enemy doing on this matter? What the enemy is trying to do is to close the mouth of morality, the voice of morality in the world, so that people will not have courage to speak about holiness or purity or power of chastity or celibacy in the world. That is the only thing they are, they are trying to. 
even if they say all the priests should marry, will you solve the problem? Those other dominion, dominions that Anglicans that are, that are married, don't you see homosexual going on among them? They want to marry man, want to marry fellow man. As long as, let me even put a warning. This teaching I'm talking about is not, I'm not speaking for those who want to become religious and become celibacy. I'm not talking about it. Even if you're going to get married. You may get married without working on your sexuality into genuine love. You will, you will destroy your life entirely. Because you will never be satisfied. The abortion that, you will, have, that will happen in your marriage will be more than the child you give birth to. Another one is that such a person may not even get satisfied. You will even see married people who will stay within themselves and still masturbating within themselves. Their husband is there, but the woman is masturbating. Or the husband is there, the man is masturbating on, her, on his own. What is the cause? The cause is that you need to work on the holiness of the body. You need to rise from sensuality to the level of the love God has created us. And it is a call for everyone. It is a, not a call for individual persons. Even if the world tries to turn up things upside down, the truth remains. God calls us to rise from our animal nature into the high level of holiness. There are other people who are advocating animal, animal life. Those people who have already come in the world and they want to live nudity. They dress naked and live just if you come to a particular place in Europe, just a place like this holy land, everybody is naked there. They want to use it as an experiment to see how they want to convert the world back to do this again. Nobody will be wearing clothes. I said that the cause of all the evil is this clothes we are wearing. Christian blood of Jesus Christ. This thing I'm saying is true. Is there a particular place? You will go there. You and you, if you are coming there, you you must dress or you must undress and join everybody there because everybody there is dressing naked. Praise the blood of Jesus Christ. So why I am commenting and emphasizing on the need for us to believe on the journey back to genuine love. It is possible. It is not something that God created us to stay here. Jesus came to show us the way. In all the journey we are going to move, we are going to follow the footstep of Jesus. And I want to assure you too, there is a level in life you will reach you will lose the appetite of sensuality you will lose the appetite those things will not have appetite in those will no longer control you in fact you don't even if you don't have appetite for it but there is one thing i want to tell you if you keep on allow it to remain on you and the you think that you will conquer it by age. You are making a mistake. Do you know that? At the age of 90, it will become active more than because you have not worked it. That shows that the only way is to move from sensuality as, as, a, as a young boy, somebody who is young can lose the appetite even at the age of 30. And it doesn't have effect on you. Somebody who is 80 years, we will still be struggling and dying on it and be torturing on it because you didn't work on your own on time. Do you hear what I'm saying? Because some people will think that it is, it is only a matter of age and time. It is not a matter of age and time. It's a matter of how you start to work on yourself. How you move. The only thing that is different between age is that it will be torturing you but you don't have any age. Please show the blood of Jesus Christ. You have the torture in you, but no energy in you. Do you know which one is even more difficult? You, you see plenty of food, you, have, you don't have teeth to eat it. You only look at it because there's no teeth. You only have tongue. 
and uh, and Aburo. When the, uh, you look at all the food, you don't know how to go about it. That one is more painful. And how will you get out of this mess? How will we get out of this mess? We have to begin now. To know that there is a perfect love somewhere. We are moving from Eros to Agape. You hear what I said? Journey from Eros. That is conversion. Jesus knows that we carry this burden on ourselves. Jesus knows that this force is in every man. But he wants us to follow him to Agape. Where is the Agape? Agape is on the cross. This is a sweet place. Very beautiful place. If you begin the journey to the Agape, that is where you will find consolation. That is where you will be able to see yourself as it is. That is where you will be able to really love. You will now know that love is not satisfying of oneself. Love is sacrificing oneself. That love is dying for the one you love. Love is just giving up everything. Love is just empty yourself without any secrets. Agape. Where Christ lay her hand up. He hung between heaven and earth and show himself as he, as he is. In the agape, there is no hidden. But in errors, there is covering. You hear what I said? Are you ready to join to agape? Are you ready? That is the journey we are beginning next month. Journey to what? Agape. Rising from errors to perfect love. Sacrificial love. Victim love. A love that is free. Where every people have abandoned you. All those who are following you in errors has abandoned you. You are hanging alone on the cross. And you, are, you will be looking for the Father too. Father will even seem to abandon you. On the agape love, there must be a word like that of Christ. Father, why have you forsaken me? But Father has not forsaken you. Really, what actually happened is that Father really want to purify what, what is of the errors in you and hang you between heaven and earth so that you stand for him alone, worthy to be received by the angels. And I hope that men and women looking at me today can do it. The energy is in you. The stamina is in you. The potential is in you. The only thing needed is your yes. Can you say you are yes? Jesus, on the day he began his journey to Calvary, when he received the cross, carried the cross and said, my heart is ready. My heart is ready. He followed the psalmist and kissed the cross and the journey began. It is now a call for all men and women listening to this voice to rise and raise Carry the cross of sexual nature and the journey with Christ to Calvary. Remember that the soldiers will manhandle you on the way. You will be beaten. You will be scourged on the way. You will be given crown, carry your cross. You will fall many times, but you should move on. What are these wounds and tortures? It is the deprivations. What the world is gaining. Because of errors, you will lose it. Do you hear what I say? People who are crying for you, weeping for you, weeping for you, like women of Jerusalem, you will have the courage and say, Do not weep for me. Weep for yourself and for your children. At this place, you need to sell all the self love and self pity. You should learn to be firm. This is the journey. Christ is inviting us in the call of conversion and they said, unless you die, you cannot resurrect. How I wish that you will listen to this voice and begin this journey. It is a sweet journey and the end is wonderful. May God bless all this word in your heart through Christ our Lord. Because I will not come back to this introduction again, I have to speak on the pride. After that, it's already getting late, but it's a big introduction. 
but you need to be patient. If you don't get today, yesterday's message and today's message well, go to those who have listened and ask them questions. Or buy this tape and listen to it severally. You will be able to get all the information you need to get fundamental foundation. Get a foundation which you are going to lay all the other teachings. There will be some references. Now, pride. Remember why I picked the pride? Pride, the, these two sins, remember where I started, came from two principal goal of man. Life and what? Food. So we are talking about pride. I have to speak briefly about pride. What is pride? Pride is only defined. I can define, I define pride here as man putting himself in place of God. Man trying to feel that he exists. I am. I am now God. I am, I am one of myself. I want to say this before I go. This one I want to explain here is more dangerous than the sin of the flesh. In fact, if you're a proud man, you must be, you must also be a, sin, a, 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 a sinner in the sense of sin of the flesh. You must, that one is not an option. That you're already in, into it. No proud man can be chest. You hear what I said? No proud man can be chest. The moment Satan was thrown out of heaven, he became the woman of great Babylon. He became the, the prostitute we know in the book of Revelation. If it is an African setting, he became more miri or banje. Satan become all this, all this big, all this evil name. He become the man of iniquity who promotes nakedness. The message is called it the great woman of Babylon who goes about introducing nakedness and impurity. So pride gives birth to all other things. Now, let me hammer, point out something. Unfortunately now, the way I will go is that this thing called pride is very delicate. At times, it can disguise himself in holiness. At times, it can appear to be a good angel without knowing that he's a Lucifer because he was once in heaven. So this evil called pride, if you don't check it proper, some of action you do is beat it. But no matter how he hides, Whenever Angel Michael comes, he's being exposed. Precious blood of Jesus Christ. So, what then is, how do we know this pride? And how does this appear? There's no way I can explain it finished. But I want to point to the one that I think consigns us as these devotees. Precious blood of Jesus Christ. Remember where I started? That pride is as, as a result of life. We are proud because we want to protect the life. The moment God wants to show you a little, bring you down, if God touches your life, you become humble. Now, where pride shows much interest is on that that holds life and holds hope. What is that that is holding life and hope? Each individual has something that gives you hope and gives you life in the sense of what makes you to participate. Here we are as devotees of the precious blood. What gives you hope may be what you do well. What gift God gives you? Where you come up in a special way and does what? Here. Pride defined himself in what he does. 
not in what you are. What you are does not make any meaning. So, we Christians, devotees of precious blood, don't define yourself. Don't hang on what you are doing, but hang on what you are. I want to narrate a simple story or give you an, uh, an analogy now. If you are in a ship, you may not have been in a ship, but imagine that. Or you are in aircraft, but using ship as an example, and the ship is sinking. What will you do? Eh? You what? A foolish man will begin to do many things and left almost everything undone. Do you hear what I said? I repeat what I said. A foolish man at this point will begin to do many things and left many things undone. But a wise man will do nothing and do everything and eventually accomplish everything. You didn't get me? Okay, think about it. Let me leave you with that word. I am speaking about pride. What defines you is not what you are doing, but what you are. And why one of the key points that holds pride, that we make pride, so rise is disobedience. Disobedience shows itself as the first son of pride. And when disobedience comes up, it's only revealing to you that you can be like your master. You are more than your master. You can compete with your master. You know what your master knows. Or something like that. That is exactly what happened to Satan and to our first parents. But obedience is the opposite. Ob obedience requires the crucifixion of one's will, the sacrifice of one's will, which is different from what pride is. Pride is opposite. Is carrying out of one's will. That is, doing your own will. That is pride. Is it not? This thing I'm explaining, pay attention to it because if you have pride in you, as I explained the other time I was giving Kotepeti the retreat, in heaven, there is a big door. We are, when Peter opened the door, eh? you will pass through this door there is a scan machine there that is checking some S bits. This S bit, the only thing they are searching for is pride. If you eventually cross there and the, the bell do beep, 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 you are carrying pride. You will send it to purgatory to, to, to purify you. You may stay there for years. I am serious of what I'm saying. Our Lord make it very clear in one of the messages. said, for sin or pride, no entrance into heaven. Because we don't know how we enter heaven. And there was a civil war in heaven that caused the head of many angels who became now Satan. So since then, just like America is, is blocking people who carried a suicide bomb, all these things, terrorists, they are pushing them and chasing them out of America now. The same way in heaven, they dare not allow anyone who carried this uh, atomic bomb. You will go there and commit suicide and commit suicide and kill everybody, kill many souls. We don't even know how we enter for the first time in heaven. You know how many stars, according to the liberation, say one third of the heavenly angels get lost in one single entrance of suicide bomb of pride. 
Is it not so, so terrible? So God will not allow his entrance. So that anytime we are preaching about pride, pay attention. Pay attention because you will not know how it is and where it is. Obedience is the opposite of is the first son of humility. Obedience. And what is obedience? Obedience is sacrifice, sacrificing one's will. Not my will. Your will be done. You, you, you offer your will in obedience. And in one of the messages, the Lord said, Satan has no power over the obedience. And what makes obedience is willing obedience. Willing not the one you they ask you to go to do. You are only doing it because you feel like doing it. You have no option. Pending what you have in mind, you will do when you are free. You will destroy what you have. Just you will carry it as a wound. Obedience never carry any wounds. That one is not obedient. It is what you call suppression. Suppression. And that one is even we call it hidden pride. Hidden pride is that you obey, but within the heart you have not actually obeyed. You have a wound. Any obedience that is painful and painful is not yet obedience. Obedience must be willingly, freely, and lovely. Must be a yes from the heart, not a suppression of acceptance. I am not accepting it because I have no option to do it. You, you have not obeyed. You only must in pride. And don't know what it will result why you show it's not obedience. When you are, you have opportunity to show an act, you will eventually destroy that thing you have already think you have obeyed. You will commit more evil more than that. And that reveals that that thing that seems to be obedient in silence is not obedient. It's nothing but what? Eh? Pretense is, is a hidden pride. It is, more, it is dangerous and deadly. And you, see it, you can't even hide it. You see it in the person's language. Add the person to light apology. You will see it in, that, in the letter of apology. It is very, very open. It is a hidden pride. Pride does not hide itself. It reveals itself very, very clearly and clearly. Even if he, hi, he has a wing like an angel, has face like an angel, you always see that the eyes is that of demon. Do you hear what I'm saying? I also talk about this pride. Pride can also become a vainglory. This thing I know I am doing, nobody can do it better than me. And it comes the only way you will now know whether that person, remove that person from the office, as I mentioned yesterday. There are many of our devotees, leaders. Take them away from Sava. Let them be ordinary member. No more guessing money. What keeps them there is pride. They can never serve God. 